I was, I was very, very struck at the time when Mandela died. The reverence, the adulation that came from the whole world. And it was so different from when I was a child growing up in South Africa. And there the world heroes were generals and writers and commanders and statesmen from the north. And the rest of the world was seen as a world that needed to be civilized, uh, incorporated into the value system of the, of the West, of Europe, and uh, maybe a few of the most advanced people in the conquered communities could enjoy some of the benefits quickly of belonging to this Western civilization. And now everything's inverted. And this world hero is an African, an African man from Southern Africa who spent 27 years in jail, being held up as a model of the civilized human being of our age. And I think it is saying something important about the transformation of values in the world. Uh, the nearest echo, I think, would have been Gandhi, also from the Global South, uh, a figure from the oppressed community who led a struggle for independence, but with a vision and a sense of compassion uh, and a human embrace that went well beyond the narrowness and the, often the ugliness, the violence of the Westerners thinking that their ideas were superior and were naturally dominant in the world. I think the big lesson that came from South Africa was to show that it is possible for people of different races, different backgrounds, class formations to live together as equals in one country in ways in which we were never, 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 never told would be possible, even by the most ardent anti-apartheid supporters. They would say, down with apartheid, of course apartheid's wrong, it's got to go. But when we would speak about one day we're going to have a non-racial democratic South Africa, the eyes would glaze over. Impossible, impossible. How can people live together after centuries of domination, so much alienation? And my own belief is that why we got it right in South Africa was we combined certain university relevant factors, uh, themes that came from different continents, had different origins, into an amalgam that became very much a Southern African amalgam, but one that was uh, capable of being embraced by the whole world. I myself come from, I was the son of my dad, a trade union organizer who fled as a young child from pogroms in Lithuania, in Europe, uh, to South Africa. He became very active in the struggle for justice, democracy in South Africa. My mom, Ray, was a typist for Moses Katani, uh, who had been the general secretary of the Communist Party and a member of the national executive of the ANC. I just grew up in that world of ideas that had come, ideas of internationalism, of the oppressed people of all the world coming together, of discipline, of struggle, that you're on this earth to create better societies, to change structures and institutions, to have a just society. That was my background. And then we had people of Indian origin, directly influenced by Gandhi, who spent 20 years in South Africa, developed many of his principles of Satyagraha in South Africa, mobilizing the people, using the power of the will, the introspection, the desire for justice as a weapon against injustice, the discipline involved in that, the spirituality involved in that. We had 
traditions coming from the UK of the trade union movement, uh, traditions of British radicalism over the centuries battling the Chartist movement in the United Kingdom for workers to get the votes. We had the Freedom Charter in South Africa drawing on those elements from Britain. We had the influence of the churches, the missionaries, cutting both ways, often telling the people, you're heathen, you're backward, we will show you the light, but others saying, you are children of God, we are all equal under the skin. Another form of internationalism, if you like, that could be very unifying, very profound. And above all, we had a deep cultural philosophy, way of life, existential principle, if you like, of African society. We call it Ubuntu, U-B-U-N-T-U. -U. And that recognized the interdependence of all human beings. I'm a person because you're a person. I can't separate my humanity from an acknowledgement of your humanity. And it's against the atomizing individualism, the acquisitive, competitive, doggy dog quality of so much of Western society. We are interdependent. My recognition of your humanity strengthens my humanity. It doesn't weaken it. It gives more meaning to my autonomy. It doesn't undermine my autonomy. That sense of interdependence, very deep in African society, never destroyed by apartheid and strengthened by people coming together in the solidarity of struggle. Now you put together all these different ingredients and you get a universal quality of respect for humanity and human dignity that came through in the South and became exemplary to the whole world and that was exemplified by the figure of Nelson Mandela who didn't create that culture but he demonstrated it with a particular articulateness, a uh, particular humor, style, compassion, humanity, rigor, thoughtfulness, but embodying something that was very, very deep in the South. For me, it represents the difference between globalization and universalism. Globalization presupposes that there is a center of ideas, values, technology, power, if you like, that then spreads its influence and power and domination to take in the whole world. Universalism works in exactly the opposite way. It presupposes that there are certain things in human experience that are found all over the world that pain is pain, oppression is oppression, a will to freedom is a will to freedom, that sociability and dialogue and discussion are things that people want all over the world, that arbitrariness and violence and repression are things that people resist all over the world. And you extract from the experiences of people everywhere in the world certain key themes and elements we call them fundamental human rights. They might have a different significance at a different time, in a different place, at a different moment. But essentially, it, it's what uh, Shakespeare said, I think Shylock said, when you prick a Jew, we feel pain like everybody else feels pain. It's that kind of principle, that kind of understanding. And so that's why I regard the Universal Declaration of Human Rights as being, in a sense, truly universal its main principles, because it distilled the experience of people who'd been oppressed in Europe, in North Africa, in Asia, by Nazism, by Japanese imperialism, who'd suffered terrible, atrocious attacks on, on their dignity as human beings, coming together to assert a new vision of the world, which we were then, those of us, resisting oppression in South Africa were able to draw upon to achieve emancipation in our own country. 
to me, that is universalism. It's the bringing together of human experiences all over the world in a, that distilled form that can then be utilized everywhere in the world. And um, I think the great boon of the South African experience for people in other countries is to see the manner in which these ideas that found such fertile soil in South Africa that grew out of South African experience with Ubuntu, that sense of human interdependence playing a key cementing solidarity role, but allied to the great notions of the earth about justice, about freedom, about humanity, about the rights of people, about changing the institutions and structures of society in a way that allows more people to be more free to express themselves in more appropriate ways, to explore, to create, to love, to associate, to question, to criticize. All of these things, to my mind, are the best features of what we've achieved in South Africa, and all of these things are features which I feel are of value to people all over the world. Thank you.